<laughs> okay, so 16.2 line integrals. First one's number seven. So they give you the graph and you're gonna find the line integral. This one was yours, Mustafa, right? Mm -hmm. Over C of x plus 2y dx plus x squared dy. Okay. So let me draw, there's how many curves that make up C? Mm -hmm. Two. So you're going to have to break it up into C1 and C2. Okay. So here we go. I'll copy the picture down. This one goes to one, two, three, one. So this point here, yes, it's two, one. This is part of it. I'll call this C1. Did you call it C1? Mm -hmm, yeah. Doesn't matter. But yeah, the, at least we're all in agreement. And then this ends at 3, 0. So this is C2. So we have to parameterize each of the curves. Okay. So C1, initial point is 0, 0. Terminal point is 2, 1. So we're going to write parametric equations for a line segment starting at 0, 0, ending at 2, 1. So you need the direction vector. Did you find it? What is it? Uh, two, one. two, one. Perfect. So what do I use for x naught, y naught, the initial point? Uh, zero, zero. Good. So this is the initial point. So your parametric equation should be x equals 0 plus 2t and y equals 0 plus t. Perfect. While we're at it, let's find dy and dx. Okay? So dx would be dt. Yeah? And dy would be dt. Perfect. Okay? t is between? y0 and 1. Line segment. To go from one point to another point, the limits on t are always 0 to 1 when you make the direction vector with those two points. Okay. Then curve 2 goes from 2, 1 to 3, 0. So what's the direction vector for that? You know what? I have, I have to call it V1, V2, right? We should be so precise. We should. What is uh, V2, the components? What are its components? One and negative one. And negative one. Perfect. Okay. Also line segment, right? What do I use for X naught, Y naught? Two, one. There's X naught, there's Y naught. Okay. So X equals 2 plus 1T. Y equals... Good. So what's dx? dt and dy? Perfect. Good, good, good. Okay, so now we put it all together. Okay, so we had line integral over c, x plus 2y dx plus x squared dy. So we'll do curve 1 and curve 2. Okay, so basically you have line integral curve 1 of all of this plus line integral on curve two, all of it, okay? The nice thing is, oh, I didn't mention, my bad, shame on me. The limits are the same. So you can eventually combine it all into one integral. You don't have to do them as two separate ones because the limits are for t and they match, right? Okay, so here we go. So curve one, the limits are from zero to one. Ah, you can't see. X is two t, y is t, okay? So X is two t y is t, and dx is 2 dt. Are you okay so far? I'm just subbing it all in. Plus x squared, x squared is 2t squared, so that's gonna be 4t squared. I'm gonna lock the door. This is inappropriate. Tomorrow I'm locking it at two sharp, dt. That part okay? Yeah. Okay. Plus. I didn't know how to the line segments? Yeah. Okay. Do you want me to keep going or you got it from here? You got it. Blah, blah, blah. Do for curve two. And then it should come out to five halves. Yeah? You agree? Okay, good. <laughs> We're all in agreement, which is great. 17. That was the next one. 17 is z squared. Where did it go? Okay. Evaluate the line integral. Who knows where it is? 
So z squared dx plus x squared dy plus y squared dz. Shh, tell, tell them not right now, I'm busy. And then c is the line segment from 100 zero to 412. Kimberly, you needed this one? Yeah. So same thing, make your, it's a line segment. Yeah. Did you make a direction vector? Yeah, it should be three, one, two. Very good. And then initial point is one, zero, zero. Yeah. So we have X is one plus three T. Y is? Just two. Good. And Z is two T. And then let's find DX, DY, DZ now. Okay. Do we need them all? Yeah. So DX is? Three. DY. And then DZ? Good. And then T is between? Yeah. So then your integral is going to go 0 to 1. It's just that one line segment, right? That's it. Z squared, so 2T squared, DX is 3DT, plus X squared, so 1 plus 3T squared, DY is DT, plus Y squared, and DZ is 2DT. What happened? We don't need it. Why, why would you do that? This is not a vector field. Oh, so you use them for vector fields? Yeah. Not for no, no. This is, and this doesn't really represent anything. Okay. okay they didn't say you have this um, function that represents four, nothing like that. This is just for you to practice doing line integrals. Okay. Okay. So we talked about work yesterday and vector fields, but this doesn't have any sort of interpretation right now. Okay. We're just practicing. So when do you we don't use the magnitude of it. You mean like you do gradient of f dot dr? Yeah. Ah, ds. Okay, the line it, the line integral would have to say like you'd have some f of x y yeah. ds. That's what you mean. If it's given ds, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Then ds is well, we know, right? Yeah. Depending on if it's two or three space. Yeah. Uh huh. So it would okay. your your integral would say ds okay, gotcha. in it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, just do what they say. Okay. Yeah. Now, if we had more meaning, maybe this would be work. It looks like it is, right? But they're just having you practice right now. Like, we're warming up, guys. We're just warming up, okay? <laughs> It'll get better in a minute. Um, and then 23. Okay, now this integral, okay, so now this has some meaning. I don't like, they're not telling you what it is. Evaluate the line integral, F dot dr. What does this represent? Work. work. This is work. I'm going to ask you over and over so you don't get like all jumbled up in the brain. Like what am I even finding right now? Okay. So up until now it was nothing. Now it's something. Okay. So here we go. F is sine x cosine y xz. R is t cubed negative t squared t and t is between zero and one so i would just rewrite this this is x equals t cubed y equals negative t squared z equals t and we talked about yesterday you could just do p dx plus q dy plus r dz if we refer to these guys as p q r Right? So let's find dx, dy, dz right now. So dx is? Mm -hmm. And then dy? Yes. And then dz? Dt. Good? And then from here, let's see. Is the integral going to be wild? Was it giving you problems? It was? Okay, so instead of sine of x, I'm going to have sine of t cubed. And then dx is 3t squared dt plus q is cosine not of y. I'm going to put negative t squared. dy is negative 2t dt. So far so good? Okay. Plus r is xz, so that's t cubed times t dz is dt. Now we call in the cleanup crew. This is like a hot mess. I hate it. Okay, 
So we've got here zero to one. Let me put this in the front. Three T squared sine of T cubed. Can you see someone loves us deeply? Whoever wrote that problem is like rooting for you. They want you to do well. Remember that. Now, here's something that's important. Cosine is an even function. So cosine of negative t squared is equal to cosine of t squared. So I'm just going to write the next term as negative 2t cosine of t squared. I still feel deeply loved. Plus t to the fourth dt. Good. I think we can do this in our head. Mm -hmm. Even function means f of negative x is f of x, like x squared, x to the fourth, cosine x. Odd function is where f of negative x is negative f of x. Think x cubed, sine of x, tangent of x. Even functions have symmetry with respect to the y-axis. Imagine like a parabola, x squared. That's like the most classic example. And then odd functions have origin symmetry, like tangent x cubed, okay? But then that property is helpful, right, when you're simplifying. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here we go. I think we can integrate in our heads because we were so loved. Here's my du if this is u. No thinking necessary. So antiderivative of sine something is negative cosine something. Again, wow, wow, wow. Antiderivative of negative cosine something, negative sine something. Antiderivative of t to the fourth, good. You got it from here? Okay. I would say the most cutesified answer is this. And who was it? Gloria, oh, I'm just saying from yesterday. Like, it's better to leave it like this. Don't punch it in the calculator and give a decimal. Yes. Okay. That was it. See? Line integrals are fun. Yes. Say yes. Okay.